So this morning, as we get into our message, know that we are in our second week of a four-part sermon series called, You Will Be My Witnesses. You Will Be My Witnesses. We know that um, after Jesus had risen from the dead, he appeared to the disciples, he appeared to hundreds of others who had followed him. And here in um, last week, we we looked at this uh, first chapter of Acts. Uh, Jesus is with his disciples when they question him about the kingdom of God. We read this last week, but as a follow-up, let's just read it real quick together. I believe I have that uh, on the, we have that scripture for you on the screen. Acts chapter 1. It says, Then they gathered around him and asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, It is not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power When the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. So I know uh, when it comes to this topic of of witnessing uh, uh, to our faith, witnessing to what Christ has done, uh, there's a lot of different emotions that are tied to, to this part of the Christian faith, sharing our faith. There's a lot of probably trepidation and anxiety um, when we start talking about this. And I know that most of us, um, including myself sometimes, will do this when we talk about this topic, right? Uh, maybe, Maybe you're thinking, well, God has called other Christians to share their faith, but he has in no way called me to share my faith. He's called other people to be evangelists for the kingdom. And, and, and of course, that does not include me, right? For some of y'all, uh, that, that idea of sharing your faith, and I'm, I'm including myself, there's, there's some fear and there's some anxiety around it. Um, Willie Krischke, if I'm pronouncing his name right, wrote a blog um, through this ministry called InterVarsity about how most street evangelism, street evangelism feels like, uh, it, it feels kind of like someone selling something, like selling Jesus to people. And, and in this blog, he talks all about how he's, he's experienced great salesmanship uh, through his life, that there are people who are just naturally inclined to build trust with someone right out of the gate. It's, it's really easy to do uh, for some people, but some people, that's just not their gift. That's not their set of uh, talents. And he is saying that that is not his. He describes his struggle with uh, the narrow way that the church has viewed witnessing historically, that you gotta do street evangelism, you've gotta do all these things. And he's saying there's nothing, he said there's nothing wrong with that. In fact, I'm really glad that there are people out there who can do that, but it is a skill set that I don't possess. Despite years of inner varsity training, I make evangelism coaches cry. I practice the pitch, I pray, I decide to be bold and take a risk, and I mostly just make people feel awkward and my palms sweat a lot. Um, I don't know if any of you has ever tried street evangelism or gone out and and done done things in the public, just kind of cold call, essentially, just like, you know, you're you're just going up to people cold and saying, hey, you know, do you know Jesus, or how can I pray for you? but it, it can be kind of intimidating, and, and I've done some of that before, and, and your palms do sweat, and, and, and it, your heart starts beating and racing, and um, there, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of reward to it, but there's a lot of risk as well. And so it's true, sharing the gospel can often be a challenge, especially in our polarized world today, but our scripture this morning speaks a different story. Um, I apologize, I did not get, get the scripture up on the screen, it is Mark 16, 15, uh, if Derek can work some magic in a quick uh, way, he can, he can pop it up there. But it's just one simple verse. And that's kind of what we're, we're focusing out of that verse this morning. Mark 16, 15 says this. He told them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. Go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. It's pretty simple, right? Jesus, he just makes it so simple for his disciples in this. But Jesus' words uh, in our day and time are convicting. But what does that mean for us today? What does that mean for us to share the gospel with all the world and all creation? Well, what if we just started with where we are? For most of us, uh, this would be considered our stomping grounds, right? Tifton. 
probably 99% of the time we spend in our hometowns, in the places that we live, work, and play. Now, you may work somewhere out of town. Uh, you may even live somewhere out of town. You may come to Tifton to church. Um, I know some of y'all are visiting. And, and so, but wherever you live, that is the place that God has called you uh, to be your mission field. And so for us, Tifton, Georgia is our mission field. Um, this is our, our place, and, and just how special is that? How awesome is, the, is, is it that the place that God, that we call home, is the place God has called us to be his witnesses? Um, but obviously, we do send people out overseas. We don't just um, believe that, you know, this is the only place that we can go to, to share the gospel, because he said, go into all the world. But sometimes we just have to start with where we are. But if we were to ask ourselves, what kind of witnessing has God called us to specifically? That answer might change depending on who you talk to. Like we said before, uh, you may say, well, God's called some other people to, he's gifted them to be evangelists, uh, to have that gift to just come up to people and just start talking about Jesus and it's just natural and it, it, doesn't, it doesn't end in an awkward kind of situation. For some of us, God has called us into that. We just have to grow into that. But how has God called us to witness? I want to share this morning after asking Jesus the question and just kind of sitting and praying and thinking, what kind of witnesses would you have us to be? And here is the answer that I got. Bad witnesses. He wants us to be bad witnesses. All right, y'all, we're going to have to take a moment. Just What I mean by that is, y'all remember like, Back in the day, I don't know if we still say it, but man, that's, that's bad, that's bad. But in, in reference to it being good, all right? So um, we've, got, we've got three things that I believe are uh, ingredients to, to create this recipe for a really bad witness, but a good witness. So the first is bold, all right? Because it takes great courage to put yourself at risk for man's ridicule. Sharing our faith is not easy. Um, it is something that takes uh, time and thought and, and effort. I remember when I was uh, just kind of um, growing in my faith really early on in my walk, and it felt like I needed to save everyone, right? I needed to share with every person, and I got laughed at a lot. Um, I was in high school, and so obviously that is a setting uh, where people are going to um, kind of not understand what you're talking about. And that's, that's anywhere if you're sharing in a, in a, in, with unbelievers or people who, who aren't walking out the Christian walk. Man, I got laughed at, I got ridiculed, uh, but, but that didn't stop me. That kind of sometimes fueled me a little bit. Um, but for many of us, that, that, that fear of that ridicule is, is a challenge to overcome that hurdle. But I believe God has called us to be bold witnesses because it takes great courage to put yourself at risk for man's ridicule. Romans 1.16, Paul, Paul said that, for I am not ashamed of the gospel because it, is, because it is the power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes, first to the Jew, then to the Gentile. Like, what if we woke up every morning saying that same thing? Like, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. I'm not a, gonna be ashamed of the gospel today. I'm gonna share my faith. I'm gonna witness. What if we had that boldness about us? I want to share about um, an experience that Katie and I had. I may have shared this before, but um, this was uh, several years back now. Uh, I don't even know if we were, I think we were married. But we went to Columbus for this conference. It was called Power and Love Conference. Um, and so there was worship. There was a speaker. And he, um, he kind of was a little bit different. He had a, a pretty wild testimony where he um, had you know, kind of radically come to faith, and he started sharing his faith everywhere he went, like in grocery stores and um, when he was out and about or at work or wherever he was. And he, so much so, I mean, he, he made his spouse uncomfortable who hadn't really had that same experience um, because everywhere he would, he would go, he would talk about Jesus and he would pray for people and he would see people in wheelchairs and he would pray for them to get healed and th these like, radical things and he prayed he talked about how he prayed hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times for people to get healed and nothing ever happened and then he shared this testimony about this one time where he had prayed for somebody to get healed um, and it was this miraculous like amazing story 
And so everybody at the conference was hearing these things and we were getting fired up and filled up. And we were like, man, this is awesome. So then they had this like, kind of like plot twist. All right, when you go out to lunch today, um, you're not just gonna eat lunch, you're gonna go and do that. You're gonna go talk to the people in Columbus, in downtown Columbus and pray for them. And man, all of us were probably like just shaking in our boots. Like what? You just, we just thought, we heard this cool story, that's awesome. But like, we weren't actually thinking about doing anything with it. So then we're sent out to the city of Columbus to share our faith and to witness and to pray for people and to, and to pray over people and all that. And then people came back for the next session of the conference. And man, you should have heard those stories. They were wild. People just, uh, just experiencing the power of, of, and the love of Christ. It was amazing. Like, it just fueled our fire even more. We were excited. And so we came home. Katie and I came home from that conference. Like, man, that was awesome. But now we've got to take that to where, we're, where we are. And so um, we found ourselves at Walgreens for whatever reason, shopping for something. And uh, I felt like the Holy Spirit was just kind of leading me to share uh, with, this, with this worker, this woman that was there working. And um, it just felt like the, the Lord just kind of led us to her. And I said, hey, you know, we just kind of got to talking. And I was like, hey, is there anything we can pray for you about? Like, what's going on in your life? And man, you would have thought just like, we just... Like we're just, it was just cool how the, the timing of the Lord set it all up. But she was like, all right, I'm going on my 15 minute break. We're going outside. I gotta tell you all this stuff that's happening. And we, we ended up just listening to her and, and, and had a chance to pray for her. And man, just tears just flowing down her face as the Lord just brought his peace, just brought his, his love upon her. And it was so powerful. Um, and we'll, I'll just never forget that story because it was so out of character for us. Like, yeah, we'll, we'll if somebody were to ever ask me for prayer, I would just immediately just say, yeah, let me pray for you. Um, I would love to do that. But to go out of my way to break that barrier, that wall that we often find ourselves experiencing when we go into public, it was like the Lord just tore all those walls down and said, I, I want, I want to, I'm pursuing this person and I want to use you to be a part of that. Um, and so that was really special. So what, what, what my point is here is that it took being filled with the Holy Spirit to really walk in that boldness, right? In Acts 4, 31, it says, after they prayed, the place where they were meeting was shaken and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God boldly. The Holy Spirit empowers believers to proclaim the good news to the world, right? So we gotta be bold. The second thing that we have to be is authentic. Authentic, that's the second slide. Because God hasn't called you to be someone you're not. Being a witness can be a struggle. And depending on the church environment that we were raised in or if we weren't raised in church at all, we can view witnessing as an awkward sales pitch for Jesus. <laughs> um, probably at some point or another, I'm assuming, you've had experiences or you've seen on television this portrayal of evangelism and how different people can um, share, try to share the gospel. And so one of those is kind of like a street evangelist. And there's a picture I want to put up, kind of this, this um, we, we, we kind of, when we think of evangelism, we kind of have that tie that in our mind, I feel like, my, at least my mind goes straight to this, the street evangelism who's preaching like hellfire, brimstone, and condemnation, and just scaring people, scaring the hell out of people, you know what I'm saying? Um, hopefully. Uh, but there's, um, and, then, and then on television, uh, any Simpsons fans? Anybody ever watch The Simpsons? So Ned Flanders, he's kind of just this like iconic, like I'm gonna save you, I'm gonna preach to you. And, um, but it, it makes it really nerdy and it makes it really like, kind of like, I don't wanna be like that. I don't wanna be that kind of Christian. Um, Christian is smiling, he knows all about Ned Sanders. All right, let's take Ned Sanders off the, off the screen. Um, all right, or Flanders, Ned Flanders. Did I say Sanders? I meant Ned Flanders. My bad. But um, the idea that, that these things conjure up feelings of what someone kind of doesn't want to do, right? Um, but, that, but that's because God has called us to be authentic. He hasn't called us to be replications. Uh, and, he, and he hasn't said that you have to go be a street evangelist in order to share the gospel. Uh, you don't have to be um, someone you're not. See, the Holy Spirit 
not only empowers believers to proclaim the good news to the world, but he uses our personality and our context to do so. He has given you a testimony to share that no one else can do for you. Um, I remember in, uh, when I was living in Athens about maybe like 10 years ago now almost, um, I got kind of connected. One of my roommates went to this church called Vineyard Church of Athens. And Vineyard Church is kind of a denomination of churches that was um, started in Anaheim, California. And it's kind of spread throughout. But they're, they're not a very um, well-known denomination. But anyhow, um, there was one in Athens, super small. The pastor there was named Kyle Wise. Really liked him, really a uh, laid-back guy. Uh, just, I, I liked his style. And, and he invited me and my buddy Ross to come out um, one Saturday night downtown, which is like a party night in Athens, right? Everybody's drinking, everybody's walking the streets. And what he did, and he did this kind of, um, you know, whenever he had the opportunity, and he would, he would sit, up at, sit up at a table, kind of tucked away uh, in, along one of the streets, not kind of like preaching, like, you know, with a megaphone or anything like that. But he would just sit there and smoke his pipe. He had a little pipe. And he would just smoke, smoke his pipe and, and he would engage with people in conversation and, and he would pray for people if they wanted it. And so we sat with him and we, talk, we watched him talk with people and, and pray with people. And, you know, if you, if you said that to, you know, a lot of different folks might have an issue that he was sitting there smoking a pipe. But I think he was just being himself. He was being authentic and he was being real and he wasn't preaching condemnation. He was preaching the love of Christ and saying, God's gonna meet you where you are, and he loves you. Uh, and so that, that's just an example of, of him being authentic. And so the question is, how can we be authentic in our approach to sharing the gospel? God doesn't want you to, to be somebody you're not. God doesn't want you to be somebody else. He's given you a testimony to share. That's B, that's A, bold and authentic. And then finally, the third one is dependent. God's called us to be dependent upon him because it's the Holy Spirit's job to testify about Christ to us and through us. Acts 1.8, just to remind, it says, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. The thing is, we are called to be dependent on the Holy Spirit. We, we do have a responsibility, we do have an action that he has called us, he's called us to go. He's called us to share, to witness to him. But we can only witness what is revealed to us and what we have to carry to the world around us is what is God doing in us. And we're, we're not, it's not our job to outrun the Holy Spirit or to try to save everyone. That's his job. We're simply to be called to be faithful with whatever God has given us, to testify. He's given you a mouth. He's given you feet to go. He's given you hands to serve. And all of that, all of those actions, all, all of the ways that we live out the gospel, um, testify of who he is and what he's done. But the Holy Spirit is central to our witness. In Acts 1, as well in the writings of John, uh, we see a connection between being a witness and the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. I wanna read John 15, 26, 27. It says, when the advocate comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth who goes out from the Father, he will testify about me. And you also must testify, for you have been with me from the beginning. Jesus was telling the apostles, you're gonna testify about me, but it's gonna be the Holy Spirit's words testifying about me through you. In John 15, John, Jesus describes the person and the work of the Holy Spirit in the life of believers after Jesus is crucified and resurrected. And he says that uh, what we just read, but the role of the Spirit here the role of the Spirit here then is likened to that of a supporter for the disciples in witnessing to a hostile world. The role of this helper is to testify or witness concerning about Jesus. 
but the disciples are also given the same task of witnessing. So last week, we kind of, like I said, we launched the series and started talking about, a little bit open up the conversation around being a witness. And um, I'm going to call, uh, well, I, I'm not calling you out in a bad way, but John Jacobs, uh, he came up and shared to me something that to me was really simple, uh, but I really liked it. And so I wanted to use it this morning. Is that okay, what you shared with me last week? All right, he gave me the okay. Um, and that, and that question, it kind of answers the question, how do we start to witness our faith to others? And he said, we just have to simply start by sharing what God has done in our lives, what God is doing in our lives. Has God done something in your life before? Has he forgiven you? Has he helped you through a, diff a difficult life circumstance? Has he ever provided you with something that you never thought possible? But whatever it is, whatever God is doing in your life, simply start there and share that with other people. So that makes up what it means to be a bad witness. Bold, authentic, dependent. You know, you can claim that you would be bad at witnessing, but that would only mean after today's sermon that you're actually a great witness. And if you were to say that you're a good witness instead of bad, well then that must mean that you're the baddest witness of us all. So keep up the bad work, church. Bold, because it takes great courage to put yourself at the mercy of God before man's ridicule. Authentic, because God hasn't called you to be someone you're not. Independent, because it's the Holy Spirit's job to testify about, God, about Christ to us and through us. So I'm gonna invite the band to come back up. We're gonna have some more worship, but would you pray with me as we close this time of our message? Heavenly Father, just thank you for the opportunities that we have to share our faith with others, with our family members, with our friends, with our coworkers, with the people that you've placed in our lives in front of us. We ask that you would give us the ability to break down those barriers, those walls, to be bold in sharing and witnessing what you are doing in our lives and what you can do for other people. God, we know that this world is hurting and it's broken and it's in need of a savior because all of us are part of this world. The difference is we've experienced a taste of your mercy and your kindness and your love toward us. It's led us to repentance. It's led us down a path of walking in wholeness and new life. And so we ask that you would just allow us to not keep that to ourselves but to witness to what you've done, to testify about what you've done for each one of us. God, allow us to do that in an authentic way, to not have the pressure of living up to perform, to be like somebody else. And God, may in all that we do, rest upon you working in us and through us. And we pray this in Jesus' name.